All right, so it's going right now. Um, just so you know, I can always like, if you ever want to redo saying something, I, okay. I can always cut it. Okay. And like, I'm sure this will have lots of cuts. Like this won't, won't be in it. Really? I don't know. I think because you said that it might be now. <laughs> it will surprise the viewers. Hi friends. <laughs> what is up everybody? My name is Chase. You already know that. And I'm standing, sitting here <laughs> with, Livia. With Livia, I knew that. I definitely did. Yeah. Because I just, I, right. I just said your name. Right, right, right. That was just a test. Um, sitting here with Li with Livia, and um, I'm gonna ask you some questions, and we're gonna keep alternating. Look, <laughs> <laughs> that's per that was per that was perfect again. Um, sitting here with Livia, and I'm gonna ask you some questions about stuttering. But more, what I'm more interested in is hearing about who you are because when I first met you we were dancing and usually with dancing I don't really feel a connection with anybody because I feel like to have a connection for me specifically I have to connect with them on a verbal level a, ver a verbal level maybe, may maybe that's because I've lacked verbal skills for a lot of my years so now when I connect with someone intellectually or conversating it just feels a lot stronger and we didn't even talk that much while we were dan we're, while we were dancing but there is just something about you something about your energy that made me feel like i could connect with you it made it feel like you have a brain designed for <laughs> you're gonna stop it you had a brain <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. you had a brain designed for cool in cool conversations so with all that hyped up you're gonna hear an amazing story from Livia well let's see what she's kind of been been through and let's see what her take on stuttering is because it is stuttering a stu stuttering awareness day today is it? it is oh I, I I didn't even plan this but it makes it seem like I did because I've interviewed three people so you far can totally own it and say that i'm going to i'm going to <laughs> and uh so let's start can you give yourself a little introduction and who you are and kind of a background on yourself whatever comes up of what you think people should know about you that's what you should talk about it's a big question yeah <laughs> is this at the right level perfect level okay um okay who am i it's a big question i feel like it's a question that I ask myself a lot and over and over again, I think especially through the founder journey. So I'm actually here where, are they allowed to know that we're in Colombia? Oh, no, yeah, they are. <laughs> um, so we're in Medellin in beautiful Colombia and I get to be here with one of my best friends and co-founders. Um, and we're able to be here because we can work remotely and what we are very passionate about is ultimately human development and preventative mental health care solutions and specifically right now educational institutions um, but it is something that we're hoping to create a more global impact in one day as well and I think I guess on that note specifically with mental health it was always something that was a really big part of my life growing up in high school and I feel like coming from an Asian household as well it was something that was just never talked about um, I remember going to my mom about wanting to see a therapist at some point sorry <clears throat> wanting to see a therapist and I think she was just like that's stupid like there's nothing wrong with you like yeah. kind of thing um, and so I kind of just like kept going with life and then university gives you a big slap in the face sometimes and I think just being at university at the time, also going through just like the transition of like friends, of identity, of I was going through like a bad relationship breakup at the time as well and I just felt like a lot around me was changing and I didn't know, like a lot of people I think just how to cope with that. Um, and it came to a place where when I was in university, um, the thought of like also self-harm came back to me and I think there was a moment I remember in my res where I kind of like looked at myself and I was like I, I didn't want to feel this way anymore like I didn't want to it felt like I was at like a fork road and I was like I can either go down this path or I can go down this one and I was like no like I, I want to change I don't want to feel like this I don't feel like this is who I am um, and then I think 
the rest is history. I think I just dove into mindfulness, meditation. I would say meditation like saved my life in many ways. Um, I had a lot of really close fit friends that went through a, a really bad experience with the mental health care system and I think that angered me a lot and I felt like there were there needed to be a lot more people in this space that genuinely cared and how do we bring that to the table and how do we create a more awareness around that as well yeah. so yeah I think that was more like very specific on mental health, but it, it's something that personally I'm really passionate about um, but other than that here I like to learn bachata <laughs> it's super fun the culture is beautiful here and I love traveling meeting people um, and I agree I think you also share a very warm welcoming and curious vibe to you so thanks for bringing us here yeah my pleasure okay so now and for everyone to know like i i'm learning about livia right now as well like we we didn't talk about this before like just be just before this live uh livia was talking to my friend alex and i almost was like trying to plug my ear because like <laughs> i didn't want to hear about your story until now and you talked about how a lot of your friends went down the mental health like trying to get help and it wasn't something that you you were very proud of like the the way that they were treated and you talked about it was also because they didn't really care that much why do you feel caring is such a such a big deciding factor if someone like would you say if someone cared and was helping versus someone who didn't care and was still helping do you think they like how would the outcomes change and why is that such a big thing for you and why why is why does that have such an emotional impact on you if someone cares that's a good question i don't think anybody's asked me that before um i think ultimately and this is maybe a little less sciencey but i also think it's pretty sciencey and there's been some proof to it but i do believe that ultimately like as human beings like we are energy um, and I think our emotions carry energy our words carry energy and especially when someone's in a very vulnerable state I truly believe that they're also more vulnerable to the emotions the energies and the feelings around them and it, it kind of at those times you can feel like an open wound where you're open to receiving anything you're really looking for that help and support and when you're met with someone that, and I'm sure everybody has felt this, where there's just certain things where you can't describe through an interaction with someone, where I think one of my favorite quotes is like, um, people may forget, won't remember what you tell them, but they'll always remember how you, they make, you made them feel. And I think on an energetic level, also when you care, you're willing to go the extra mile for someone. You're willing to do, give more time like give more love and there's a lot more like nurturing and maybe like a lot of unseen things that goes behind really supporting someone um that just isn't the same if you're just doing it to go through the actions and i think that's what our medical system our healthcare system is designed to do right now and it's it's very effective in so many ways but on an emotional stance i think a lot of people are left behind and it creates a very sterile environment and especially when you're in a state of seeking honestly like love care nurturing everything and how like I remember just going into like the hospital room where like my friend was and everything and it was just so sterile like it, it was almost like it was like a surgical room and it was probably the opposite of what anybody would want to be in um, when they're in that vulnerable state and I think if we led with love first, human first, rather than just like a number, a patient, a person to get through the system, we would see very, very different results in the medical space. Yeah. But, yeah. That was an amazing answer. And I think that just showed like, the not, I would say the depth of your intelligence because there's clear, like, the depth of your intelligence can't be shown by one answer but that answer did show like how much you think past the surface level like a lot of people that I, could, I would ask that question to 
they would give all unique answers but very rarely would I get an answer that 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 deep and that true to like what and this is this is um bias because it's a it's a answer that I also very agree with it's like love and self-acceptance and all of that is is the answer is like once you truly truly feel that love in your heart and you can truly like love yourself because you see love from others not just because you see love from other people but from that as well is such a healing effect on on its own like you can give the best techniques you can give the best tips and tricks and um, coping strategies but if the person doesn't love themselves and if the person they're working with is in it for an alter, uh, alternative motive mm-hmm. ulterior motive what, what, whatever it may be um, yeah it's not going to have the same Im- the impact so I completely agree with that um, so to talk about stuttering a little bit do you know what a stutter, what a stutter is? So I haven't gone specifically like in depth in research, but from my understanding of it is when, I guess I can't use the word stutter to describe stuttering, but when there's, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, because so, I'm totally taking it, but like... You're, oh, you're, you're, you can answer whatever you want. There is no wrong answer here. My assumption is that when there's almost like a disconnect between... <gasps> You offended me. No, I'm just I can, no. <laughs> I can tell you're walking on eggshells. No, right I'm trying oh. to think about. No, no, no okay. No. I feel like it's when there's a disconnect between what you're thinking, what you want to express, and how you feel. A disconnection between what you're thinking, what you want to express, how you feel. And I would. I. I, I believe that. And I could also, again, be very wrong. Um, an assumption that, in some cases, it could also be a very subconscious trauma or experience that also affects the stutter or the experience. Yeah, that's my guess. That's a good guess, and that makes me excited to ask you more questions because I swear I was just thinking you were going to say it's a blockage in speech, things like that. But when you can say it's a disconnection there, like that is holistically like what it is. Is like you feel a certain way and you want to express yourself a certain way, but there's some type of blockage there. And why the blockage is there, you like you said there might be some type of trauma. Um, what it really comes down to is like you're really what you're holding back inside of yourself. Like your repressed emotions, because stutter, stu- stuttering is lit is literally just te- just tension, just tension stored inside of you, which tightens your throat, which tightens your chest. Which some people with a tense chest, tense throat, will stutter more. Some some people when they face tension will go to like i don't know have like different responses to 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 this tension and people who stutter are, are kind of more wired in a way to have a blockage in in their speech based on where, where the tension is stored and why this tension is stored can be a wide variety of reasons can be trauma can be just feeling anxious can be holding some fear of a specific outcome can be from a inner resentment they feel to someone that they're not letting go of like there's a million reasons but it's really re- repressed emotion that you don't feel is safe to express and safe safe to feel and you don't give yourself the acceptance and the recognition to feel these emotions and allow yourself to process them and that's why I feel like I don't feel like that's why acceptance is the key but i don't like the way the word acceptance is is used a lot is like just accept it and you'll you'll be okay i mean like be like becoming the most authentic version of yourself like if you're feeling anxious ex- express express that if you're feeling worry if you're feeling doubt if you're feeling shame 
don't hold it in and act like it's not there like become the most authentic version of yourself where you are releasing these emotions and you're not storing the tension inside of yourself um, but the way you said it was just perfect too it's like there is a disconnection because you can't express yourself how you truly truly want to express yourself because that tension causes you to be in your head and anticipate and swap out words and try not to stutter which completely deflates your personality when you're trying to speak to avoid something avoid stuttering or avoid embarrassment rather than speak to have connection like that's a, a big disconnect there um yes please um so you spoke about i guess the idea of when like authenticity being that almost in a way where you're validating emotions and feelings as they come up and expressing them as they come up rather than pushing them away or pretending that they're not there which oftentimes we do um but in your personal journey as well what does that mean to take that step from that like validation and to transform it also into self-acceptance but then also to feel confident in being authentic as well because for many of us I think it's not feeling empowered to like it's also scary to like share yourself with the world and to be to be vulnerable and to open up but oftentimes I agree with you like I think acceptance can sometimes be a very like airy thing and it and I'm also a firm believer that everything that we need is already inside of us and we're always taught to look externally but the answers are within but sometimes unless you believe that it's also not going to be true for you so how have you also on your journey embodied that belief embodied the belief that i am enough just like yeah really and just like authenticity is the way <sighs> because like people who stutter they can already speak fine like they don't stutter when they're by when they're when they're by themselves no matter how severe their stutter is when they're in a room by themselves they don't stutter and if they do it's a lot a lot less and it's only because they're trying not to try not to stutter um, but it's not comparable at all to how they speak with a person like I didn't stutter at all when I would like just a few years ago if I was speaking with you it, it it w w w would s s s sound l l l l l like this like it was pure pushing in a room by by myself it was completely fine and i saw a connection there it's like okay when i'm by myself like what sep what separates the version i am when i'm by myself versus talk when versus talking to someone and I re and I realized also I could speak to my dog fine, so I I, I realized like a living thing I, I I can talk to. It's not that it's a living thing, it's not that it's just a conversation. It's the fact that this person can judge me, and they they have the ability to judge me, but a dog doesn't. And there's no external judgment I feel when I'm speaking by myself. And I also realized my stutter would speak in would spike in severity if I cared more if I put more value to the other person's judgment of me so a professor or a, a, any type of authority figure or any type of person I saw as high high value or cool I would stutter a lot more in front of and I saw that I saw that connection there I, I also re, I also realized when I'm stuttering a lot I'm being I'm trying to prove myself. I'm trying to please other people. I'm trying to be perfect. Or I'm trying to pretend like I'm not someone that I am. So I, I call those the four P's. Proving, pleasing, per perfecting, and pretending. I realized those were so, so apparent in me when I'm stuttering the most. When I'm the most fluent, when I'm the most effortless, I'm not thinking. I'm not trying to prove myself. I'm just in the moment, present with the person. And I made the connection when I'm present in the moment, not stuttering, I'm saying the things I want to say. 
I'm being the person, I'm moving my body the way I naturally do without the filters getting in the way of like, is this okay to do in this moment? Will they still accept you? I just do it. And there's no extra filters. And that's when I'm the most authentic. That's when anyone's the most authentic, when there isn't the fil the fil the filters there, seeing if this is okay to do in this, si in this situation. And there's the most filters when I'm stuttering the most, when I'm trying to prove and please and just be, like have that front up to not get judged from the other person, to not get a weird look, to ho make sure they don't see me as weird. I'm pretending and I'm putting on an act. So I really saw that connection there and I realized it's not just with me. Every person who stutters is the same way. When they have that front up, that's when they stutter the most. And that's when they're re repressing their true emotions. How they truly feel, they're holding back and trying to present a version of themselves that will get the most likes, get the least amount of judgment. So I realized if I truly want to overcome my stutter, I have to learn to express myself as if I'm in a room by myself to other people. How am I not doing that in conversations right now? And how can I feel as safe as if no one is judging me when I'm speak when I'm speak when I'm speaking to someone? So that re that realization is like being becoming the most authentic version of yourself allowed me to speak, like allowed me to actually actually speak to people. Um, so there was no other way around this. I had to become authentic in order to speak, and uh, that was that was the main um, realization I had. That like you have to express yourself. If you try to hide, you're you're going to pay for it. Thank you for sharing. I don't think I've ever. Also, like thank you for the crash course on like how it like feels and like what that journey looks like I think even from my perspective from hearing it like this like to me it also sounds like almost like yourself and like people who have experienced like stuttering that I would almost say that you have probably a stronger connection to your body than most people do because ultimately like in that moment like some like your body knows or something knows within you that something's not right or something that's not aligned and you almost get that direct feedback exactly. to yourself whereas I think we are groomed and trained in this world to not be authentic and to put walls up and it can be it can it's very easy to do that nowadays almost for a lot of people but I think ultimately that's where for a lot of people now the sense of unfulfillment or feeling disconnected and lonely which is a big thing that and one of the leading causes of depression as well and for a lot of students that we see because it can feel like even with social media like not feeling like you can express yourself in the way that you want like and like you were saying like judgment and I also believe judgment carries such a strong energy with it um, and I feel that incredibly and I think one of the biggest things even trying to like build a business and being and I've noticed even sometimes with like my male friends and certain things where like I, if I feel like someone is valuing my words for less than then I definitely hold myself back yeah. but I don't know if it's because I'm like no, it's more so like if like I don't feel like I should have to prove myself to this person and I think also for you as well like I'm curious to know like have you also you you know how like when they're like um, the people that you surround yourself like the five or nine people or like who you become everything like I'm curious like can you also use like this might be a weird question but like your kind of expression of stuttering as like a filtering mechanism for people as well of like who you feel comfortable with and trusting whether or not this person has like the energy that you want to also be around yeah that is an amazing question oh my gosh okay so like there is different ways to look at that because back when I was in a severe stutter stutter stut, stuttering state I, could, I wouldn't connect with anybody sim simply because I wasn't 
allowing myself to show myself vuln vuln vulnerably to anybody, meaning that like you can't have connection if you're not being vuln if you're not being vulnerable. Um, you're like you don't put yourself in the energetic state to attract the people that are going to be right for your life if you are not um, there your your yourself. So I feel like yes, there like your the stutter is the ultimate filtration process uh, way to filter people out. Um, but you have to put yourself in the right state first to to do that and that's the same kind of advice i heard with someone if they're trying to build a social circle like don't be this sounds harsh but like don't be a loser trying to be in a social circle with amazing people like you are just not going to attract them into your life and if you really want to attract the best people into your life be in that state first where you love yourself enough and you'll attract other people who also do um, and it's the same thing with your stutter if you're hiding and repressed then you're gonna view everyone as dangerous you're gonna view every interaction as something to avoid and something to um, just like hide yourself in so once you can get to a state where you can express yourself vulnerably and you can stutter and still feel like you belong in the group then you'll be able to see who still is listening who is still paying attention who did that not who who cares about me truly and not exactly how i'm saying it but about my essence and about what i'm saying who truly cares about that and who doesn't and there will still be people who i stutter in front of and i can just tell is like it does it does get them distracted and does get them like not as not as invested or, or like they might even talk over you during a block or something like that and that's not saying they're a bad person but maybe it's just not the person that is at the stage in your in their life where they would be a right fit to, to be with you and um, when you're in a state where you can express yourself vulnerably 100% you you will see the people that are right for you in your life and you'll also see the people that just don't connect with you that well but it it you must be able to show yourself in a light that is that is true first in order to get that real feedback because honestly i remember trying to connect with people with a front on and i would all i would only become friends with people who also had a front on and it wouldn't be a true friendship it would be like let's hang out so we're not lonely and it wouldn't be a true connection where I, after I hang out with them I'd feel better about myself it'd be like okay I just wasted some time um, so with that kind of mentality that we just talked we talked about becoming the most vulnerable version of yourself and expressing that is that something you've kind of had to go through in your life at all have you had to let down some walls at all and what did that process kind of look, look like it's a good question <laughs> um i think when we when i reflect on i think who i who i've been and how i've evolved it's kind of harder and i don't know if you feel the same way in the sense that like i feel like we spend every day in our own minds in our own heads so like it's like when you see someone every day you might not notice the little changes but if you don't see someone for like eight months a year or two years you can tell immediately like the the difference in like how they look their energy how they speak everything um so i think for a lot of time for me like later on in university there would be some comments from my friends would be like oh my gosh yeah like whoever you were in like first year and stuff and to me it kind of like created a little bit of disconnect within myself because I was like, I've always felt like me, you know? And I feel like I've just like learned more and evolved in certain ways. I do think reflecting now and looking back, a big thing when it came to, so I feel like when it comes to like vulnerability and being open and accepting yourself, there's a lot of inner work and unlayering, I think that is on that path 
to acceptance because I think it's also very easy based on like our social conditioning and our environment to believe that we are a certain person or to believe that we need to be a certain way and to convince ourselves of that. And I think for me, a big reason why I love, 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 love traveling is because it takes you away from like all the reference points in your life and you're somewhere where like you said, nobody has expectations of you. So there's not really judgment if you can't, if you don't have expectations. And then in those moments, <laughs> did you see that? I saw it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's right on your forehead. Um, it was a bug. <laughs> um, and in those moments, like, who are you? And I think in high school, I did a trip to China, which is where my family's from. And I was going, I was experiencing depression when I was in high school. And so, when I went there, it honestly felt like I was standing on like a mountaintop and it felt like such a breath of fresh air. And I, I just had a moment of feeling like, wow, like my, there's so much more to this world. Like my problems are like literally like this small in comparison to like earth and not to like invalidate how I'm feeling, but almost as like perspective, like, you know what? Like there's so much more I can focus, like my energy, my attention on like, why am I creating such a miserable world for myself when there is so much beauty and I think when I started to meditate and I think spend some more time in my own head and also spend alone time I think I grew up always like wanting to be around people and not wanting to be alone and I think a lot of my friends and like people I've come across have also shared that and I think I was probably scared to be alone and be in my own head and like think about okay who is it that I want to be how do I strip myself because it's as humans we want to be a, a part and to feel accepted like I think through evolution like if we weren't accepted we would have died we would have been thrown out and so I think biologically like as like a survival mechanism a lot of what we have is still there like same with like fight or flight and everything and I think now we live in a world where we can move past that and think about okay what are some of my ancestral instincts that can be applied here but what are some that I need to let go of um, and I'm totally going on a tangent right now um, but I think it wasn't until I think I really tried to put myself in different situations around different people and I think focused more on okay and you had said this mentioned this earlier like asking myself the question of how do I feel after being with this person do I feel more connected with myself ultimately like do I feel good or do I feel like I had to be someone I wasn't do I feel that like kind of like closed offness and that's how I think I started filtering through the people around me and that's when also when I heard the quote of like you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with and I absolutely agree I think our environment and the people that you surround yourself with is so important and when that changed and when I started to change that everything else changed and I felt like it was like a snowball effect afterwards but I think the first thing was like who are the people that you want who do you want to be and how do you want how do you surround yourself with people like that yeah. and then everything else like it, I think the law of attraction just does its thing <laughs> okay well this is amazing it is getting dark I don't think you can even see your faces anymore but um I would on I would honestly continue it's been like 40 minutes that's so it went by so quick um i could honestly talk to you for many more hours and too bad you're leaving tomorrow i know <laughs> and too bad i got a float tank in about 20 that minutes too. maybe but um if you want to see part two i would also want to see it make sure they you can't even see us. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you drop a like if this hits one million no <laughs> hey anything is possible if this hits one million <laughs> likes I will fly I will fly Livia out to Vancouver and we will do part two on the top of I was gonna say the CN Tower, that's not even in Vancouver. No, that's, not. that's in Toronto, that right? That's absolutely in Toronto. I don't also know. Also not it's, I think it's a little overhyped. So. Overhyped? Yeah. Okay. Well Yes. Let's get this <laughs> to a building million likes. Somewhere. <laughs> on the top of it. And uh, yeah, so I don't feel like we even cracked the surface because I feel like talking to you would be very, very interesting and we, we can go very deep. But that's all for now. I'll call this part one because I have a weird feeling 
some way or another our paths our paths will cross again and um, this is part one and we talked about a lot of stuff and um, is there any last any last things that you would like to mention maybe it's to a person who stutters maybe it's to someone who's been in your shoes be before or anything that comes to your mind that you would like to end this off with hmm I think the first thing that comes to mind is I think I just want to take a moment to also acknowledge you and I'm really excited to check out your YouTube channel after this as well and like hear from the people that like you've connected with and what you're sharing I think it's really admirable to also like put yourself out there and it takes a lot of courage and I think to just create that platform and to create space for yourself as well to learn and evolve and to continuously seek that because that can be challenging as well for a lot of us and I think there's not a lot of people in this world that I think follow their intuition and follow their heart and listen to like the energy and like the body and like everything around them and I think you do a really good job of that and I appreciate you also like bringing us here and I know I said that at the beginning but it's been I think traveling and meeting people that are so much like are so passionate about themselves but then also other people um, and sharing that the world is really special and I can only imagine how many people that you probably already impacted so yeah thank you thank you so much for that thank you so much for that I felt that I felt it and <laughs> and uh, thank you as well for showing up I legitimately met Livia two days ago not even a full two days ago <laughs> yeah. and I asked her yesterday if she wants to shoot a video and she said sure takes a lot of courage to meet up with a stranger like that could have kidnapped me could have kidnapped you still might who knows <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah thank you guys for what for watching I hope that was helpful to anyone at any point at any point of your journey I know it would be and uh, I love all you guys. If you want to book a free one-on-one -on -one call with me to see if you would be a good fit, if you want to overcome your stutter, see if you'd be a good fit for my program, click the, clo click the closest link down below in the description and book your free one-on-one -on -one call. And I'll be speaking to you soon. I love you. Peace. Bye. <laughs> that was fucking sick. <laughs> Smash.